Today, I will talk about the kernel and the path for integration testing that we have enabled at Android Common Kernel branches. So for all the still uh, active kernels, we have enabled the kernel and the platform integration. Here, the slides shows a table that we have maintained. So the oldest kernel that we are still testing is Android 4.14 uh, stable uh, kernel that is integrated with Android uh, 14, 13, and the Android 10 platform branches. And uh, it spans all the way to the Android 15, 6, 1, the most recent kernel, and Android mainline kernels. So the Android kernel testing is a complex and a challenging task. So we want to catch the uh, kernel breakage and uh, regression as early as possible. So we push the uh, kernel testing upstream to the Android mainland branches. It will allow us to detect uh, regression as early as possible and uh, also close to when they are uh, the breakage are introduced. We also work actively with the upstream maintainers for quick resolutions. With the early regression detection and resolution, we want to ensure that no surprise at the upref phase and no late and accumulate uh, headaches at the, uh, at the later phase. We uh, partner with the Ninaro for mainline and LTS release candidate testing. So Android kernel testing is a multi-stage uh, test process, and it starts as early as pre-submit. For every single uh, change that was checked in the Android kernel, there's a pre-submit test. We, do, we Not only we have the real-time checks and tests, like API stability analysis and simple allowance testing that was enabled at built-in, we also have the runtime platform integration test like the boot test, CTS, BTS, and et cetera. So here we have, we provide a screenshot of the code change what's checked in the Android 14.6.1. And in the checks tab, you can find the pre-submit test result. Unfortunately, right now, our external partners don't have access to, the, to this tab. And we are working with the uh, Gary team to make it available to our external partners. So what test has enabled the pre-submit? We have enabled pre-submit test on the ARM64 kernel integrated with on the physical device like phone, watch, foldable, tablet. We also leverage the virtual device to increase the test coverage on ARM64 and x86 kernels and the virtual device testing uh, provide better debug and uh, kernel log for triage failures. The kernels are tested with all compatible and updatable Android versions. The test including boot test, CTS, VTS that we have mentioned. And uh, here is the screenshot of the, of the, the test that right now that are only available to the Googlers and uh, is not exposed to the external partners yet. We want to make it easy for Android developers add pre-submit tests for the, at the kernel branch. So we have maintained a pre-submit test plan at Android platform branch with the test mapping kernel pre-submit test group. So in the AOSP, main platform source code, you can find the kernel pre-submit test. For example, here there's a, a kernel uh, proc file API test that was enabled in the AOSP main branches. And the test was added with the test mapping kernel pre-submit and they can be run with the A test at the platform source tree as well. So we provide some simple example of a test command to run the uh, kernel pre-submit test. The kernel pre-submit test plan is also enabled as a pre-submit at the Android platform branch 
So which means that for any test updates or platform change, they will not break our kernel presumptive test testing. You can search for kernel presummit test in cs.android.com by the keyword kernel dash presummit. And here is a snapshot of the existing kernel presummit, it, it including a bunch of CTS tests, VTS tests, and uh, that are critical for the kernel. With the existing kernel presummit test plan, we have the the 30% line coverage and the 35% function coverage. Oh, by the way, we enable the GCOV enabled kernel so that we can capture the kernel code coverage without the testing, pre-SME testing. So what's next in the pre We will start enabling the performing uh, performance regression detector at the pre-SME. So there's a yeah, uh, performance test at pre-summit phase. And uh, we will enable the KUN and the K-self test from the kernel source code. We have K-self test at the kernel pre-summit, but they are the test binary that was built from the Android platform branch. So they are not real time and they're not test against the kernel code change and the K-self test update, for example, at the kernel branch. So with the new infrastructure that we introduce in the kernel uh, kernel tree, uh, the developer will be able to run the KUN and the KSELF test in their local environment on Android devices, as well as in the Google Lab environment. We want to enable the target quick pre-submit with, with the kernel code coverage data we collected to increase the kernel coverage while minimize the, the test runtime. We are also looking to add new verticals like Android TV and Android Auto at the kernel pre-summit. Other than the pre-summit, we also have post-summit at all kernel builds. The post-summit test, including the app compatibility test, right now we have one, top 100 app launch test and we have enabled performance regression tests like boot performance, Cisco latency benchmark, Geek benchmark, app launch benchmark, DVF, DVFS benchmarks. And also we have extensive CTS and VTS enabled at post summit phases. Challenges. So the kernel and the platform combination keeps growing along with the, all the Android device verticals that we want to support. So uh, the test space is keep growing. And it's very hard to triage kernel bugs on the Android devices. And uh, we, are, we are hoping to have more tools. And recently we have enabled the kernel debug uh, build targets and enabled with Android, uh, with Android Cuttlefish, the virtual devices, to offer better uh, logs for the triage. And uh, it's very hard to bisect device boot failure or test failures, given the volume that we have receiving from the LTS uh, updates. That's like uh, hundreds of file changes every time, and uh, it's very hard to bisect the test failures. Yeah, any questions? And uh, yes, please. At Red Hat, uh, we, have a, we have a similar issue. Uh, we support four different platforms, uh, PowerPC, Z-Series, and, and ARM. We've split, we started uh, and doing builds uh, and discussing builds for uh, the various combina combinations. Um, do you what tools do you use uh, to build your t testing site? We use GitLab, Beaker, and we're we're looking at testing farm for a moment. So we are using uh, the trade fat, the test harness that was maintained in the Android platform branch for the test integration for the kernel and platform. Trade fat, trade federation, 
It's a test harness that, uh, that is available in the Android platform branch. And uh, recently we have uh, added the trait fat as a pre-build in the Android kernel tree so that we can easily use the test harness offered there to launch cuttlefish, the, uh, I mean, not other, uh, yeah, like run the test on device, Android devices. And the trait fat is also used in the Google Lab automation. So I have a quick, um, I'm not familiar a lot with your work, so I was just wondering um, how much of the results are publicly available and how much of the infrastructure is publicly available for others to sort of do the same thing that you're doing? Okay, so for example, a test, trait fat, all those test harness, they are available. And uh, in terms of the test results access, um, Google maintain the uh, ACL for those test results, but right now it's uh, not, uh, we are not make it uh, easy accessible for our partners and we are working towards that to make it available to partners. But uh, overall, so, so for any code change that you submit, you can run the test with Google's lab infrastructure. And uh, we, with the A test and uh, some extra guides that we provide, you can reproduce those test failures with your local device as well. Uh, Kareem, yeah, just an addition. So for the tests that are run at Linaro that are open, you can still go and always check the results. Cool. There are quite a few that we do on Word dev boards. Uh, yeah, so I'm with Chrome OS and we have our own exploding number of combinations. So out of curiosity, um, you say the platform combinations keep growing. How many are there at the moment and how quickly are they growing? <laughs> so yeah, the, so here the, we have a matrix, sorry. So yeah, right now that this is the combination that we are maintaining at this moment. It's like more than more than twenty combinations, and for each combination, we are talking about multiple verticals and uh, platforms. So yeah. Yeah, I encourage you to come and have a look at the Chrome OS combination. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Next. All right, great, thank you.